Hey everybody, this is JD Gaming. Happy Friday, and welcome back to another episode of 4 Fun Facts in Yu-Gi-Oh! The show where we discuss just that, and hopefully learn something new along the way. I've occasionally mentioned Upper Deck Entertainment throughout the 4 Fun Facts series. While some of the youngsters in the room may not realize it, Konami was not always the distributor of their own game in the West. Back in the beginning, the aforementioned UDE acquired the rights to distribute Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG cards. This partnership lasted from 2002 until about 2009 due to a large scandal involving fake cards being distributed for profit. I can't reasonably go over all the details of a lawsuit that took over a year to settle in a 5 minute video, so if you're curious I've included some links to resources in the description, including an interesting local blog that chronicled these events. Basically, in October 2008, Konami sued a California business called Vintage Sports Cards for selling repackaged products containing fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards to retailers like Toys R Us where they were discovered. Vintage claimed Upper Deck was the source of all the cards they repackaged, and UDE was added as a defendant in December that year. When Konami announced it was going to seize all rights to the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, Upper Deck attempted to countersue for $75 million. Further investigation, however, pointed in the direction that UDE was indeed the source of these counterfeit cards. They were ordered to cease distribution of all Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG products in February 2009, and in January 2010, it was officially ruled that Upper Deck Entertainment had illegally counterfeited the cards. Their attempt to countersue was also not pursued on the basis of Upper Deck having breached its distribution contract in the first place. While further hearings and their settlement results were not publicly released, Upper Deck was henceforth completely separated from the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. Some of the most common cards to come out of this scandal, all of which were first edition cards with incorrect silver Eye of Anubis security holograms, were Ultra Rare Destiny Hero Dreadmaster from Enemy of Justice, and Ultimate Rare versions of Elemental Hero Aqua Neos from Power of the Duelist, and Elemental Hero Flame Wingman from The Lost Millennium. There is also a parallel rare version of Water Dragon that poses as the Mattel figure promo, but its Eye of Anubis is solid gold, except at very specific angles when it should be silver. If you own a copy of any of these cards with these errors present, I suppose you have an interesting little piece of history history on hand. This isn't the only instance of controversy with the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. Spell cards were originally introduced and marked as magic cards through Pharaonic Guardian, the seventh set in the TCG. The original Japanese term Mahokado can literally translate to either of these interchangeable terms. But what prompted this change in the first place? Contrary to popular belief, no legal action ever took place. Upper Deck just wanted to avoid any potential problems with the popular competitor Magic the Gathering. This preemptive change proved very confusing for Yu-Gi-Oh fans, as there wasn't a highly centralized and accessible source of information as we have with today's internet. The cards themselves were officially marked as spell cards starting in Magician's Force, but the eventual change of the Magic Ruler set to Spell Ruler was a much slower process. This led to some unusual situations like spell cards coming out of packs still labeled Magic Ruler, which carry the MRL set code, as well as an extremely short run of first edition spell ruler booster packs for Europe that may very well be the rarest packs in the history of the game. Speaking of Magician's Force, there was an interesting mix-up with that set as well. Despite alternate arts finally picking up some steam in the modern game, they were almost absent besides a handful of iconic monsters back in the day. One of these cards lucky enough to have one was Dark Paladin, which got this artwork in the OCG-exclusive Structure Deck Yugi Volume 2 and the TCG Duel Masters Guide. However, this artwork was inadvertently also used for the first edition copies of the Paladin in the Magician's Force core set, which did not match the cover art. Upper Deck actually offered a replacement for the affected cards to those foolish enough to mail in their rare collector item to never be seen again. It's interesting that a similar situation actually happened relatively recently. In 2017, Sea Monster of Theseus premiered as a TCG exclusive, and in all non-English territories, the cards were not marked Fusion or Tuner. This was corrected in further printings, and there was yet another replacement campaign. And finally, I want to share one of my personal favorite facts. A lot of you may have originally heard about Sea Monster of Theseus and other world premiere cards through the official Konami Yu-Gi-Oh! blog. 
This now defunct relic was my digital Yu-Gi-Oh! playground as I got back into the game in the 5Ds era. It featured anything from general strategy articles and tournament reports, to product advertisements, and most recently, videos that seem to have led to the demise of the site in November 2019. But did you know that each and every one of these cards pictured on the website has a clever name or caption? By hovering over images on the older articles or opening the URL of the image, one can uncover hidden jokes. The then forbidden Elemental Hero Stratos is 404 not found in this picture. This Battle Pack article references the world famous song Tub Thumping, aka I Get Knocked Down. And my personal favorite discovery has to be this one for the world premiere card Pinpoint Landing, whose only caption is the set code for the Astral Pack 6 version of Man Eating Black Shark times 3, which I guess is the fate a stray mystical space typhoon would bring our balloon fighter. Perhaps Konami was hyping up the sea monster as the strongest card of 2017 in an attempt to distract us from their hidden treasure. And there you have it! Let me know which of these four fun facts was your favorite down below, and I'll see you guys next week with four more. That's it for now, but feel free to grab one of these videos on your way out. If you really enjoyed what you saw today, remember to subscribe to JD Gaming for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Thanks guys, this is JD Gaming, hope you guys enjoyed as always, and I'll see you guys next time.